That's mug. What are you? Oh my god, what the, what the fuck are you? Oh. Uh. UAP's congressional testimony. It's not phony, homie. It's not baloney. The aliens are here, and they've been here for a while. We hear it and smile, so so mobile. We laugh it up while no one gives a fuck. Listen to how stupid this is. Dimensional hopping technicians that have been watching for thousands of years. And humans with fears. In power positions, they make nuclear weapons and fucking steal their ships. We must be dumb as shit. They must be infinitely patient to just keep turning off our weapons when we try to fire on them. How much time in their dimension will it take for them to jam and press the power button? We're not worth a mention. Boom, we are doomed. We're, doomed. we're just a failed genetic, genetic experimentation. We are that's doomed. all humans were, and that's all we'll ever, ever be. Oh my god. 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 We've been stealing their spaceships and re engineering them since 1940 for our benefit. For our benefit. No, don't no. press the reset button. No, don't do that. No. 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 Boom. Boom. Welcome to Dangerous Thoughts, everybody. I'm your host, Manu and Tiremi. This is your co-host, Tyson Strasberg. Hey, uh, Our uh, special uh, guest uh, this uh, week uh, is uh, Sean uh, Bosch uh, from uh, Witness uh, Citizen. We're talking UAPs. We're talking aliens. We're talking aliens. We're talking interdimensionals. We're talking interdimensionals. Uh, if you're a Christian, you might have Christian, that. Maybe whatever angels. filter you look through. Whatever filter. Whatever filter. It could be angels. Angels. But we're talking about it. We're talking tonight. about it tonight. We're it's talking about it tonight. Let's get the show started. On dangerous thoughts. Let's get the show started. Let's get the show started. Let's get to the chopper. The aliens are here. Ah. Ah. Wow. That was a heck of an intro. Welcome, everybody. This is Dangerous Thoughts. I'm your host, Monument and Terry. I mean, this is Tyson Strausberg. Uh, tonight, we're going to be talking about UAPs. We're going to be talking about aliens. Are they here? Of course they are. But like the story has been slow walked to us by the powers that be for so long. It's like nobody cares. This week, just this week, people uh, in front of Congress, this guy, Dave Grush, I think his name is, deep state dude, just spills the beans again for like the 200th time that we have alien ships. We've had them since 1940. We've been, re, uh, we've been re-engineering them for our own benefit to fly around. We have biological entities that we've recovered from other planets. Uh, it gives Congress a whole list of people in the deep state that don't want to talk tells us that he's in fear for his life for even letting us know this information. And Congress is like interested for the first time. And to me, this seems like the kind of news that in 1947, people would be running around screaming, uh, putting duct tape on their windows, or at least wondering, you know, when can we meet these things? And when can we see these ships? Uh, let's go out and make signs and, and walk down Washington, D.C., Boulevard, if that's such a thing. I don't know. There must be a bunch of presidential boulevards in Washington, D.C. That we should be walking and go, uh, show us the ships. Show us the ships. You've spent trillions of our tax dollars on these ships. Uh, we have a special guest host uh, because I, listen, you know me. I was on Star Trek and um, I played a character called Ichev. And because of that, one night I was sitting next to this guy his name was buzz aldrin at a charity dinner for nichelle nichols and buzz aldrin had gone to the moon 
And I was like 30 at the time, 32, 33, maybe. And I couldn't help but say, hey, Buzz, what was it like going to the moon? Did any UFOs follow you up there? <laughs> and he was very forthright with me. And he said, yes, actually, they did. And he had seen ships follow him up and follow him back. And he told me over that dinner, over the next three hours, that he thought that if we colonized Mars, that they would talk to us more than they already have. He actually used those phrases. Uh, they would talk to us more than they have. Um, and it blew my mind. And so from that point forward in my life, I started reading a lot of the texts, uh, a lot of the books on, on aliens and the history of, of our knowledge of aliens uh, or whatever these interdimensional things are. Um, I started to read books like Fire in the Sky. And uh, um, let's bring on our host, Sean Rosh, because uh, Sean will be able to uh, remember names for me. Who's the guy from Fire in the Sky? And welcome, Sean Rosh. From witnesscitizen.com uh, uh, st uh, stud when it comes to this topic. Uh, and uh, oh, uh, Thanks, man. Attention. Yeah, uh, I mean, he's, uh, uh, I think you've, you, you were the guy that uh, were talking, you were talking to Senator Harry Reid. Yeah. Was interviewing him, right? Yeah, I started a podcast um, a little more than two years ago on the UFO topic, um, and that started after an experience that I had that was a little traumatic. I still don't know what it is. Um, well, and not right there, because that was yeah. one of my questions. I've had personal shit, too, so let's share oh, okay. some stuff. What, did you <laughs> what, happened? what do you think? Sure. Uh, well, it was about end of August or beginning of September uh, 2020. And so COVID was uh, running pretty rampant at the time, but there was a bowling season coming up. And I, this is going to sound weird, but it'll all kind of tie together, I guess. And I always bowled with my dad and we were supposed to bowl. But I was pretty nervous about it because of COVID and um, hoping he wore a mask and other people wore masks. And I said I would bowl if people wore masks. So, But I'm pretty stressed out about the whole thing, as a, a lot of people were at this time. And... One night, a couple of days before the first night of bowling, um, in the backyard of my house, just smoking a cigarette, put the cigarette out. I'm about to walk in, pretend like you're the back door. I walk in, I look, well, I look up before I walk in, and there's a big like sideways teardrop with a little curve on it, and it's all like milky white. The substance is all milky white in it with a, like an electric border around it, and it just... Whoosh, in and out like like it was in and out of a dimension or something i don't really know how to explain it but um so that was pretty wild and then the bowling night came and i didn't really think you know i thought it was crazy but i wasn't gonna go you know shout to everyone in town about it <laughs> you know it's like okay moving on so then uh, the bowling thing came and my father and i got in a pretty big argument because there were no masks he wanted to keep bowling yada yada and this argument lasted for a couple of days. And like a, a few years earlier, I had got had a dream where I got a very dramatic argument with them, which was really weird for me, only because we never fought like that one time. So that dream had stayed with me. Fast forward to the sighting time. This argument's happening. And I'm thinking of that dream. I'm like, what the hell's going on? Uh, maybe a day or two later after that happens in the backyard again, instead of looking at the door, I'm looking at the garage, a zip of light comes over my right shoulder, and I just had a feeling that I knew whatever I saw a few days ago, I was going to see again if I kept looking in that same direction. And this is all instantaneous like thought I'm having, um, and I see it, and it's right in front of me, and it's about the size of a basketball, and it's, so it's a different shape, but it was made of the same substance, same border, in and out. And it was crazy. So I have all these things happening within a few days that all really seem like such a far off chance of happening, let alone all within the span of a few days. So, so yeah, all that's really interesting for a number of reasons. One, uh, the first time you see the teardrop, is it mm -hmm. basketball size the first time or was it mm -hmm. farther in the distance, bigger or smaller? No, if it was like arm's length, it would probably be like two feet by maybe one foot at the widest in the middle but it was like a sideways teardrop but there was a slight angle on it almost like it was coming in and out you know like how something would do that yeah um, 
so it had a point at one end and a, it was round at the other end and just kind of like came in and out. And then you have like, an inter- it's hard to describe. Yeah, you have an interesting experience afterwards where you like I've I've had this happen to me a lot of times in my life. And th- this is going to get to a a a, a, long, a bigger point. But the the idea that uh our dreams are somehow uh related and infinitely important and 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 inexplicably more important to our lives that than we understand. Um yeah. It, you have a i've had a i've definitely had times in my life where i've gone oh i dreamed this i remember this moment from a dream six years ago or whatever a (laughs) lot of people have had that experience you happen to have that experience a couple days after you see this thing and since we're speaking about uaps and we're speaking about what they are what they could be a lot of you know whatever filter your mind uh thinks like the Christians think of them as angels. Maybe they're our creators. Maybe they've been around forever. Other people think that they're interdimensionals. Other people think they're interplanetary uh, travelers. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the just recently, it seems like in the um, the in the culture of, of UAPs and the paranormal, that the two are are we're finding that that there's a, a some kind of link here, right? There's there's there could be the same thing yeah like you said there's many theories and that's kind of the hard part with following this topic is kind of the you know some of the most rampant stuff in the topic is speculation is putting the the cart before the horse like Mm -hmm. we know something exists but we don't know what it is and people like us like i'm not i'm no scientist i'm no physicist i don't know what the hell these things are doing and what they could do and what that means and where they come from. I just know it exists, you know, and and until we get some sort of more firm stuff to, to point us in the direction of what it could really be, I'm open to what it could be, you know? Yeah, me too. Me too. So that's what I like about your, your website is, is that it kind of presents the information, but it doesn't take a hard stance on this is the angle that we got to, you know, the evidence is absolutely here that something is going on. And it's been here the whole time. It's been here the whole time. so. Go ahead, I've Sasha. got a question. I want to I want to level set for our listeners so that that people can kind of uh, keep up. When we talk about uh, a close encounters, there's CE one through CE five, and uh, CE one, uh, just so people know what that is. Close encounter would be if you saw something in the sky that you say, "Oh, look at that! That that's not normal. What is that? That might be a CE one. A CE two would be if a craft landed, for example, and left some evidence of it having been here uh strut marks in in the dirt where it may have landed that might be a ce2 uh ce3 would be contact you you've made contact with with an alien uh what's a little more ambiguous is ce4 and 5 uh one uh, definition of a ce4 is perhaps an abduction and a ce5 uh perhaps some uh telepathic contact uh, can you tell us a little bit more? I think we're all pretty clear. If we've ever seen close encounters, we know CE one through three. Uh, what are the CE fours and fives? Uh, wow, the CE fours and fives go beyond a little bit of, of what I get into because that does involve a lot of, um, you know, things that aren't presented as scientific per se evidence all the time so like i can't look at a document and prove that ce5 is real and what ce5 is basically as far as i know is uh, making contact with an extraterrestrial and and you initiating it like um so people will like go out in the field and you know try to summon the ufo and, and stuff like that What's his name? He's a guy that invented this. This he he didn't invent it, but you're talking about Greer. Yeah, he pretty much hijacked the term and and tried to make people think he invented it, but that's not the case. (laughs) But yeah, so and and a lot of people do that. Some people that I really trust and respect, and and they vouch for it. I myself, uh, you know, I've 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 tried it uh, plenty of times. I've never seen anything, you know, after I've done it. I've seen things like a few days afterwards or a few weeks. So I'm not really sure what the deal is with that. And abductions are interesting. Um, And there's definitely, you know, if you're looking at John Mack, who is the lead Harvard psychiatrist when he was there, uh, led a a, a very long and respected uh, study in abductions. And I would definitely recommend checking him out. John Mack? 
Correct. Yeah. And he, and he basically decided what I think is the, the reasonable decision as far as that goes is that these people aren't crazy. They're normal people. They, some people are very professional doctors or lawyers or whatever, and, and they all have very similar stories and similar details. Um, and there's no other aspect of their life that where you would think that person's crazy. And that is doesn't not, mean, yeah. Is so he still it, around? Is, is, no, no, he he, so he, he was like Betty and early. Barney Hill all the way back to like the early days of, of. I'm not sure he was around then. He came around a little later than that. Um, okay. But yeah, so and he's like got Whitley a couple Strieber, books. Whitley Strieber, 1980s, uh, 1990s. Yeah, Whitley Strieber is a famous case. Yeah, but the what what people are really trying to decide is what does that mean? It, it, is that really an extraterrestrial? Does it really look like that? Is it some sort of weird projection? Is it, you know, this uh, author Jacques Vallée wrote a book, Messengers of Deception. You know, and the whole theme of it really is that you're, you're shown what they, whatever that means, want you to see. Yeah, Jacques Vallée so, is like a big player in the whole uh, Yeah. Theme. He's he wasn't Jacques as as well like friends with people at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory and probably I think yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jacques seems to show up in, yeah. in all sorts of strange places. Um, yeah, I, but the I, but the thing is like that this stuff goes back to like a lot of people think 1947 Roswell, right? But yeah, um, actually, you know, everybody knows the band Foo Fighters, Dave Grohl. Well. You know, that was actually what they called UFOs during World War II over Europe. Yes. And those are seen all the time. And and there's documented evidence on that, you know. So this stuff uh, goes back further than that. Even in some Air Force documents, they talk about how these go back centuries. So the, the Foo Fighters, were there, are there any documented cases that you know of, of Foo Fighters ever firing upon anyone? Or were they just things that flew like glowing balls that flew. They, they were glowing balls, orbs that, that they saw in the distance. I don't think there's any documented cases of them hurting or firing on. One Vice thing versa, that have... there is. We're, yeah, we're, yeah, yeah, we yeah. actually or fired we... on them. And there's oh, actually yes. a really great video testimony yes. of it, of, of this yes. Frenchman. And he shot at it. And apparently, like, he just, I think he just either lost the bullet, like, it just soaked it in. Yeah. But whatever happened, it didn't work. So. <laughs> I, I want to say it was the Russian Roswell where the Russians shot something down. Like in our Roswell, sure. you know, it, it came down on its own. But in Russia, I think that was a situation where the, the UFO was, was shot down. Uh, I, I have a question for you. Something that, that has always rubbed sure. me the wrong way about Roswell. If you think about the government story, right? The super secret weather balloon, or if you believe the... There were actual, you know, dummies on board that, that had sensors, whatever, whatever that is. It was supposed to be, according to the government, a top secret classified balloon of some sort. Yeah. Now, think about this for a second. If it was so sensitive, and believe me, we had optical tracking and we had radar track. We had all the, the tracking at that time. Mm -hmm. If it was so super secret and sensitive, why did it crash in, in late June it was found, uh, uh, you know, I think it was right at the end of June, early July. Um, the farmer who found it, you know, it, it was the July 4th weekend. He took it to town and showed some of the debris to his buddies. And it wasn't until July 6th that he drove to Roswell. And we, we heard all, you know, the story and what happens from, from that point forward. And then they come out. I would think if it was something super secret, they would have been tracking it. The second it touched the ground, they would have been pouncing on it. But you're telling me more than a week went by and no government official is out there looking for it? Right. Now, if you I... knew it was a super secret weather balloon with super secret stuff on board, yeah, you, you would have pounced the second minutes. it landed on the ground. Yeah. That, that That's something that never rung true with me, right? Obviously... The... The Roswell story is, is to me, is a bit of a mess. And, and a lot of that has to do with how the Air Force treated it when it happened. Could you imagine now if the Air Force came out on, you know, whatever news channel and said, that's it. You know, it's, it's not fake. It's real. And these are pretty much the exact words they use. This is real. We have a flying saucer. 
you know, <laughs> that's what and, they and that they goes out Ex exactly. Yeah. And, and then, then as the hours come out with some Reynolds wrap and says, "Oh, we must took the right, Reynolds right, right. wrap." For so then, from that comes, you know, all all of this, and but there's a lot of you know testimony, a lot of people that talk about it, and and so it's it's hard to completely discredit 100, percent but I do agree that you know, it doesn't feel like it's um, what it's meant or chalked up to be, so to speak. I mean, if it is a, a flag saucer and it came and crashed, you know, while you, like your argument, I guess you could say, is uh, we should have been tracking it to know exactly where it was to pick it up. Well, could we track bizarre. things that oh, were going if, that if fast? It were, you know? No, 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 not a UFO, yeah. not a UFO. Oh, that's, why, that's why I believe it's a UFO. Oh, because okay. if it was our, if it yeah. really was a weather balloon, a balloon it really sure. was our yeah. top secret experiment. Right. We'd, we'd be like, damn it, our balloon's going down. And we'd be like, yeah. Ah, we'll so we'd, right, in, right. <laughs> in, the, in the 90s, the Air Force came out and did like a Roswell report thing, right? And what they said was that it was the Skyhook balloon is what it was in 47. Then they also attached the bodies to those dummies. The dummies, actually, they didn't start using those until the early 50s. 50s and so yes. what they said was, well, everybody mis mistook the date. They all got it wrong. And in 47, the Skyhook balloon, it was actually tracked down to, I want to say, like MIT or some college on the East Coast, possibly. But that not, might be 100% accurate. But they found the records of all these Skyhook uh, launchings and the dates that they were launched. And there was not one that would correlate with the the crash in the date. So, which was my point. So, I there yeah. may have been some confusion. So I think what you're I right. Was, yeah. mm -hmm. What I meant to say was a UFO. They you. weren't looking for it, so they mm -hmm. didn't know it happened. If it right. was a classified program, they'd be all They would have known the second it went up. They would have known the second it went down, where it went down, sure. and they would have yeah, counted. Totally. It. A totally. week went by because they weren't looking for it because it wasn't there. Yeah, what would it they do with not... the B twenty one Raider if it like crashed somewhere? Would they be like, oh, right, right. you think a week would go by and they were like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, there it is. Give me a break. Which brings Give us to this week, right? Uh so yeah. this guy David a grush is it grush i don't know how to say yeah it. grush yeah. so grush is a national reconnaissance officer deep state guy is that correct are you yeah. are you have you been keeping up with what happened this week and sort of like this specific uh, for sure points of, all right can yeah. you give us a little detail uh, into what was said uh, by David to Congress. Yeah, so uh, David Grush, I believe he's a 15-year Air Force veteran, um, and then he, uh, and I think he was in a, some sort of intelligence officer there. Then he moved to the NRO, a National Reconnaissance Office, who handles all the spy satellites uh, throughout the globe, super secret stuff. Um, and then he moved to NGA, National Geospatial Intelligence, um, and, and they deal with the satellites too, but they mainly deal with the imagery. So the NRO will like take the pictures and everything. And then NGA deals with the pictures while he was with NGA. He wound up being the liaison, the liaison to Aero as we know it. And he was also in the UAP task force, which came before Aero. Um, Aero and Aero is the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, which the government is running now out of the DOD to investigate UAP, who is saying basically none of this is real. You're all full of crap. So, so yeah. David Grush, when he was with the UAP task force, which preceded Aero, he, that's where he made all these findings. He was tasked to go find, you know, any possible programs. He looked into all the different classified stuff. He had all the access, according to him, that you could want. And he interviewed over 40 witnesses over the course of four years. And the conclusions that he came up with, he testified to under oath uh, in front of Congress, which are um, we have UAP craft and he knows the exact locations they're at. He knows the companies and the witness list. Some witnesses are, um, you know, nice witnesses. Others are hostile witnesses, apparently. And he's submitting all this to Congress. So it's, you know, all along this time, over the course of 80 some years, there's always been debunkers and, you know, different versions of who we see now that debunk stuff. And it never goes away. It never goes away. And things persist. Um, and here we are finally to the point where somebody is testifying to this in front of Congress under oath. 
There have been so many attempts to do that in the past, mainly in the mid fifties, uh, a little bit in the sixties, and they never were able to get actual witnesses for an official hearing uh, sworn under oath. So it's a historic UAP uh, hearing for sure. So yeah, Sean, and now we'll just have to see what happens. What I, found I, I have a, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Manu. Go ahead, Manu. What I found exciting was that, um, you know, not. Not only did he swear to this, but he also said that he was completely in fear for his life uh, yeah. for spilling these beans um, and that he had a list of, of, like he said, nefarious people that didn't want to testify and friendlies that would testify. And I also found it exciting uh, how many members of Congress were like, bring the list. Let's do this. Let's let's keep this meeting going. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, I've never you, seen that much of a like real government dig where, where and bipartisan, yeah, by bipartisan excitement about hey, let's which, which never stick. happens in yeah, this Congress, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> aliens, it took aliens to find some common ground. Um, <laughs> but it's super cool. And the other thing that I found that it got me thinking about all sorts of things. But one of the things that I that I found interesting was the F eighteen pilot that supposedly got quite up close to this thing uh, and saw a UAP. And they come in all sorts of forms. We've been told about the cigar shapes. We've been told about the flying saucers. But, but he saw, we've been told about the Tic Tacs in, in 2004, the, these incredible uh, ships that look like Tic Tacs. Um, but he ex explained it as like this, uh, like forest field, like see-through gelatinous sort of substance. And in the middle was a, 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 a perfect black box. And I was watching that that you know show where they're out on Skinwalker Ranch, where Senator Reed and and uh, Bigelow had the twenty five million to do real government research out there to find out what was going on out there. Some of the footage that Skinwalker Ranch, the the new guys that are set up there, uh, have found, really looks like that. They've got a lot of footage of those ships that have the white border that, and it's sort of like. Hmm. Uh, kind of shimmers and right in the middle is this perfect black eye they don't have like Weird. a real close this f-18 guy said he got right up on it are but, you talking about commander fravor with the with the glasses by chance yeah uh, the tic tac I, I, yeah so that yeah. was that was all solid white apparently and no no yeah, no the uh, this this was stuff that came up in the in the grush okay. meeting Okay, gotcha. Um, not the Tic Tacs were all white. They were like, yeah, yeah they were like a, a giant. By the way, I live in San Diego, so I have seen. That's where the Tic Tac. Oh wow! Yeah, 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 yeah. I live in San yeah. Diego, and believe me, I have seen some shit. Uh, get to that in a minute. But I've got a question for you. Something we have talked about, Sean, a lot on this show, and that is when we talk about our senses, our ability to to sense things. Right? We can see, taste, touch, smell, and hear, but that's because our biological evolution from, you know, take an amoeba. An amoeba doesn't have optical orbs or hearing, you know, doesn't have a, it doesn't have a, a eardrums, a canal, it can't hear, it can't see, it can't, its biology limits it to touch. That That's what it has. It can't see, smell, hear. It taste. has no idea what its reality is. No idea, right. And we and have as, five, so what makes us so better? As we get more progressively complex biologically, yeah, we have five. But who's to say that that's the universal limit? There could be 10, 15 senses out there that we are biologic, like the amoeba. Thousand senses that does missing. not yeah. know that that there's you know light or there's hearing or there's these other things it, out it, there. What what do we not know exists as far as as the nature of reality that ETs or other entities might be more biologically advanced as we are to the amoeba, they may be to us. They may be mm -hmm. occupying the same space looking at me right now as we speak, but I lack the senses to know they're there. Yeah, is some might possible? say some might say that's the case. Uh, it, is it possible? I don't see why it's not possible. For instance, if you look at the visible light spectrum for the human eye, we can only see from 300 to 700 nanometers. What's outside of that range? Mm -hmm. It could be so many things. We have no idea. So oh, even uh, if you go guy, to the ask, ask the guy who's into ham radios about the electromagnetic spectrum. Worse, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I know so, a little bit about the electromagnetic know, spectrum. Yeah, there, there's there, there's so much. Uh, you know, yeah. we, we feel good when we're in control, when we understand vision, audio, when we understand our atmosphere, when we understand physics, our, our you know everything, gravity from 
from the simple things from the most complicated. The more we can control and understand, the better we feel. But it comes down to it. When it comes down to it, we don't know everything. And that's just how it is. And so many people try to understand, like, how would we detect aliens or I don't get it. Why would they crash or anything? The, the number way you can the number one way you can go wrong in looking at this topic is trying to assume that, you know, anything about a species or a human point that of would view, be right? right from a human point of view about something that is completely right. not human. You have no idea smell and thing you know it could have five completely different senses like you said that are completely different than anything we know or understand you know and we don't go in our backyard and make uh, friends with ants you know yeah how long have they been here too uh, if, since the beginning uh, are if that's they the case makers? are yeah. they our creators are they our and <laughs> since we have biologicals uh, according to david grush who i tend to believe he's a pretty uh, all these witnesses that have come forward from the military, uh, I don't understand after 200 plus, uh, 500 plus, whatever the number is, uh, you know, Colonel Corso, et cetera, mm -hmm. uh, guys that are, you know, deep state DOD dudes uh, that have come forward at this point, how you could question, um, like why would, it would have to be some giant, uh, conspiracy you know, there's no throw us off some like there is no why that, yeah. that, you know that's yeah. the number one problem i have with uh you know people who are just like you know i understand before this was said under oath or whatever this is all really hard stuff to just swallow as fact you know and i've had an experience and i've been following this and i've looked at the document it's still not easy but you know once somebody uh swears under oath um, to this stuff, like, you know, we just got to wait and see and, and and see what comes of this, because you're, you're right. Like, either way you, you put it, it's a big problem. Like if if this is some psyop where this guy's lying in front of Congress. Right. Like, that's that's not how it works. <laughs> you know, you can't yeah. do that. First throw of all, that's massively what? illegal. Yeah. yeah. And to so, throw us yeah. off of what? I mean, I, I read a, that there was a quote by, I don't remember the man's name, but he was a CIA. Uh, he led the CIA in the 70s at, at some point. I don't remember the man's name, but the quote was amazing. And the quote was something to the effect of, uh, by the time we're done with our program, our uh, the American people, every single thing the American people believes will be false. Wow. And I was like, what kind of a fucked up thing is that to say? Um, but well, you so, can kind of see that happening. Yeah. Yeah, you can. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, and so when these guys come forward from the deep state who, from my perspective, we've been warned about by Eisenhower, was it Truman? I think Eisenhower. Sure. Uh, uh, JFK tried to warn us. And then, you know, what happened to him. Um, and then everybody since th that the military industrial complex, for lack of a better word, um, have been keeping a lot of secrets from the public. And who was Majestic 12? That was Eisenhower, thing. right? Majestic 12 is supposedly the 12 guys that ran the secret Blue yeah. Book, project Blue Book. I but it think. was under Eisenhower, I think. I think. Yeah, I think. Maybe Truman, maybe Eisenhower, maybe Blue. I've specifically and on purpose have stayed away from looking at those documents just because... The Blue Book um, documents? No, the, the Majestic 12 Majestic documents. Because those are so, like... Eh. They're, 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 well, they're very incredibly interesting and mind-blowing but it's uh like it's there's no way to confirm it at this yeah. point so i do not want to get wrapped up in that <laughs> you know yeah. so i just try to yeah. stay to to the real deal stuff but you know the the closer and farther we get with this stuff with like david grush i mean you do have to start wondering like what was real and what wasn't you know, stuff oh, wow. that's come out before. People always say, like, how have they kept this secret? Have they? Or is it that it's so unbelievable that it's almost in, impossible not to keep the secret? Sean, look we, we keep guys. talking about... <laughs> look at we these couple talking about from YouTube. Hold on. They, <laughs> now, all right. Gr Gross says we have biologicals from these crashes. So my brain immediately jumped to they've got bodies. They've got pilots. They've got things sure. that fly these ships. Uh, two of our folks from YouTube just stated, well, biologicals could be anything. It could be space kelp. It could be a couple of pieces of germs. But 
even if that's all we have, it's still from a crashed alien spaceship. Yeah, and I think to to a certain degree, like uh, I think Neil deGrasse Tyson recently said, like just so you know, like dandelions are biologics or whatever. It's like, dude, we're not talking about UAP we recovered that happened to have dandelions piloting them. You know, <laughs> like that's not what we're talking <laughs> yeah, about. Talking you know, about. maybe he just used that word for a reason. He did reference and submit to the congressional record his interview with News Nation, which. Yeah you know, was more specific as far as, um, you know, when things crash, inevitably they have pilots they have attached pilots, to them. So, you know, I, I, and, and for somebody with a great name like Tyson, I would expect uh, better from him. Uh, oh, he's we've not talked interested. About, <laughs> yeah, he's not. No, believe me. I'm, I'm, I, it's I, funny, he's a great physicist, but he's not interested in that topic. But we've we've talked about everything from the past until he's now. I'd like on to this talk idea about that 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 light. You have to fa- that the universe is so big. There's no way they could make that. Eh, come on, you're smarter. Yeah, than yeah. That. you can bend <laughs> well, time. Well, go from well. The, see the the, the thing he does. Big. The thing he does, which is something we were just talking about, like, um, first of all, they always go straight to gray aliens when they want to talk down about this or little green men. You know, if little green men were going to be here or if we had spaceships, like they just go straight to the cliche of the topic, because what that does is further lament the already existing stigma and inflame that to try to. And it keeps people away from from going in when the real question is, you know, nobody's talking about little green things or whatever dude we're just talking about things we don't know what they are listen to dave fravor listen to ryan graves like we don't know what it is and if you can't handle dave grush you know just stay out of the kitchen you know i want to get to talk crap about it (laughs) i want to get to two topics the first the first being why what is what is the reason that a government might want to cover like why wouldn't they just come out say yeah we got them you know, because what is the reason? It's, I, it's, I have I, I, I have some more mongers, but go ahead. Uh, I, I I have some some thoughts and I'm sure Sean does. Yeah. too. And I know you do, Manu. Let's talk about that. That's number one. But number two, it's becoming increasingly hard to keep things like this a secret when today everybody has one of these. Right. Before, uh, you know, somebody might have got lucky with the Polaroid. They were in the right spot at the right time. But today. Uh, there's more than a billion cell phones with cameras on people's hips. And uh, we're getting to a point where the technology might not be, they might not be able to keep it under wraps. I mean, <laughs> Texas, remember the exactly. Texas light in the nineties, nobody mm-hmm. had smartphones with nobody cameras had, in, yeah. in the nineties. But mm-hmm. what if that were to happen today where everybody could pull out their iPhone or their Android and you right. had high quality, good resolution from over a million people in a major city, how are you going to keep that under wraps? And Sean, You're not. I, you know, Sean, you sent me something about uh, a little clip about uh, an interview you did with the late Senator Harry Reid, who was very interested in this topic. And 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 he was angry. And, and I think in general that so much had been hidden from him. Uh, and he did an incredible thing to get uh, the Bigelow Aerospace, that 20, 25 mil or whatever it was to study Skinwalker Ranch. I'm I'm thinking that you know quite a bit about Skinwalker Ranch, um, and and when I see the show, I, I see some. I mean, you're talking about the cameras. You're talking about Tyson. They've they've got some in. Yeah, great book. Skinwalkers <laughs> at the Pentagon. Great book uh, about the time that Bigelow was there uh, studying with with Harry Reid and the others. Um, these. These citizen scientists who have only been there uh, for three years or four years, four years, I think now, uh, since the property was sold, have come up with a- at least uh, 30 or 40 images of some pretty high quality, multiple crafts, like 20 plus crafts. And they they are these really interesting crafts that I was talking to you guys about earlier that have this like white on the outside and this perfect black square in the middle. I tend to think that that kind of craft is likely to be uh, um, not piloted by a human or a biological. Hmm. I'm sure that if these things are, and I tend to think they probably are uh, from some other part of the, of the galaxy, whether they've been here for millions of years or uh, they came sure. from a, another star over, I tend to think they that's likely the scenario, that they would have plenty of probe type of crafts that were 
uh, piloted by their AI or by their super tech. Uh, Grush said that their tech is their technology is phenomenal. Even said uh, could turn us into a charcoal biscuit if they wanted to. Um, from what I've read about UFOs over the history of uh, you know my uh, hobbyist uh, look into the topic. These things have turned off our nuclear power uh, facilities, uh, our our missile facilities. They've turned off nuclear experiments. They've took, they've shut down missile launches. They've done all sorts of things. Jets that have tried to fire upon them have have had their whole systems go down and not operate. Uh, the French pilot that you were talking about earlier fired upon it. The bullet just kind of soaked into something uh, and didn't hit it. Um, they're obviously either very very patient with us <laughs> because we uh, uh te- you know a- a- or they're like the, the i can't help but think of the possibility that they're outside of time in some way and outside of our time space to the point of like maybe they even operate on a different timeline where 2000 sure. years on a in in a for us uh, is like you know they 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 can check in on that in a you know a couple hours and go okay that's what the humans have been doing for the, uh, yeah. hey, we have examples of that here on Earth the redwood tree might be two thousand years old there are turtles sea turtles that are two hundred years old there's uh, 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 sure. jellyfish that that don't die at all that they might be right. thousands of years old so it's not I mean even on this planet. It's yeah, even on new. this planet, we have stuff like that, right? Yeah. And, and if they had interdimensional portals that they could jump instantaneously from, that's a different story. Uh, and there's sure. some evidence to that. There's They could also be traveling at faster than the speed of light or at the speed of light travel. And that messes with time in all sorts of ways. So Yeah, and I, I forget. I think it was Lou Elizondo or this described like uh, possibly how these UAP work, how they're, they're able to kind of move so fast, which is basically like this bubble that, that they're inside and, and I, not very scientific, but Me it's either. like some sort of, sort of bubble where for them, they're going really fast, but it seems like slow motion. Well, you yeah, know, Star Trek, that's how warp works, really right? The, yeah, the warp yeah, you should know what I mean. A warp bubble. <laughs> and you're on the that, damn ship. Inside the warp bubble, <laughs> you're, you are not inside the warp bubble. You're not moving faster than light, but you're compressing yeah. space we were in front of you, expanding it behind fine. you. <laughs> yeah, Here we fine. are trying to figure this out, and we got a yeah. goddamn guy that was on the well, ship. I you said he was seven and nine. You ought to know this. I, I got to tell you, it's, it was one of the most disappointing things of my entire life to get on Star Trek. I so thought I was going to like be brought into the secret mold of like, uh, I didn't think there was a ship. I didn't think there was an enterprise. I know there's some people that think this kind of stuff, but I thought maybe some people on this show might be insiders in some way, because there is a very big military industrial complex uh, money pipeline that mm-hmm. goes into Hollywood and Hollywood is uh, a propaganda yeah. machine that tells us right. a story. They call it a television for a reason. You, um, you, interesting uh, tidbit about uh, Star Trek is I actually found that Star Trek was some sort of um, system that the Air Force used to track objects in space. And I found a document with it on there. I think it was a year before the first Star Trek season started. So, really? yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting. That is pretty cool. So Star Trek was a system we had back then to track, track yeah. objects in space. I wonder mm-hmm. if he took it from there because there is some I don't know. speculation that Roddenberry did have some ties to, you know, he is. A, They're a, in a, Blue Book files, oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it oh, says Star Trek. He, want, in a Blue Book he wanted to call it. He wanted to call it Wagon Trail to the to the stars yeah. and uh, I ended up renaming it. Damn story. Wagon Trail to the Stars. Wagon, Interesting. Yeah, that was, was the original. Like a Western sapphire. That was, that was yep. sort of. That was and then they made Cowboys and Aliens. Exactly. And... <laughs> so, yeah, Cowboys and Aliens. Uh, but, you know. The, underrated be, movie. Underrated movie. Yeah. <laughs> to be completely serious about this, you know, I, I, when I first started looking into this, I was thinking 1940s was we blew up the atomic bomb. I started sure. thinking, okay, the aliens see that we've split an atom. 
maybe that's when they started checking in on us. But uh, I tend to think they've probably been here a lot longer than that, just from cave paintings. And, uh, you know, I, I bring up ancient aliens and, and I bring it up because, you know, a lot of that stuff I find kind of fluffy and kind of uh, like gets you it see. thinking, though. Yeah, yeah, but it does definitely get you thinking uh, along some lines. And I, all about these biologicals, too. I, when I when girl said that we had biologicals from these wrecks, uh, which I already suspected, but I'm I'm very glad that someone like him is is uh, coming out and and stating it again. Um, are these biologicals, in fact, what what we think they are? Are the, could they be avatars? Could they be biologicals that th yeah. the uh, aliens on, from Star System B are just like putting a well, link in and, and flying there. Especially when you, when you think about how far away we are from anything else. So if it was interstellar or, you know, a different planet, you know, at least back to what we understand, <laughs> you, you would almost have to send some sort of avatar or, or drone because how would you live? <laughs> Otherwise that, that's that what long, we do right, right now. You know? That's so what maybe we do if you, right now. Yeah, if you send Who's, something out there, it takes three hundred thousand years, but finally it gets there, then you deploy your drones and look. Yeah. Look at back opportunity. Look at look at uh, 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 the rovers we have sent to, to Mars. The the uh, rovers we have sent to the other planets and and the satellites we sent to other planets. We don't send humans. We send robots. Right. So why wouldn't we think that other aliens, when they're exploring <laughs> deep space, funny wouldn't also about, send robots? <laughs> Like just right? a, like an alien going through space at light speed gets to Earth. <laughs> that is kind of funny to think about. But yeah, um, well, I'm you know, I'm on I the Avatar it. or or AI kind of thing. I think yeah, me too. Makes yeah, most sense. Like it's a biological really AI sort of thing. I think that makes sense. I also uh, oh, all right. Earlier we were talking about fire in the sky, and my theory. What's that man's name? Uh, I can never. Travis think of Walton. It. Travis Walton. So Travis mm -hmm. Walton and his buddies, long story short, they go up to this, they're, they're logging, they're going home. They see this uh, flying saucer in a field. Travis Walton goes over to it. He gets zapped by something that comes off of this flying saucer. His friends freak out. They run. Uh, Travis Walton disappears for like three, four days, maybe a week. I don't remember. It doesn't matter to me. But the point is that the friends are almost like convicted of murder or the yeah. disappearance of a body. Yeah. The police don't buy their story that they saw what they saw. And then Travis Walton appears like five days later, naked or not naked, but beat up on the side of a road uh, and starts having these memories of what happened to him. Yeah. Uh, the long story short of what happened to Travis Walton was he remembers being in a spaceship. He remembers walking into a room and trying to like find the exit button to open a door to get the heck out of wherever he was. He remembers beings over his bed tinkering with him that were gray looking like beings. He remembers walking into a big hangar where he saw other little ships. And then he saw people that looked very, very human. What some of the people these days called Nordics, uh, these blonde haired, blue eyed astronaut looking folks that looked very human. Travis walked over to these guys and said, hey, help. Where am I? What the heck is going on? They gassed him. And then the next thing you know, he's on the side of the road. I've always thought that what makes the most sense out of that story is that a one of those cigar-shaped megaships, pro, and this is all speculation. I know you like science. <laughs> but, no, I'm writing it down. But, it's fact. I'm but, like, he's got the answer. Got Hold the answer. on. <laughs> but this is, this is what's always made the most sense to me. A big a alien spaceship was parked some, some, somewhere out there. And some some aliens that were like young and uh, they wanted to go for a little joyride. So they took out one of their little ships <laughs> and they ran into some humans and they kind I've of freaked that. out. And they were like 14 and, and stoned and they were like, oh, fucking zap him. I don't know. <laughs> and and then they were like, oh, shit, we might have killed him. Like, let's bring what him do we on do? board. Maybe we'll 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 nurse him back to life. We'll yeah. gas him. We'll put him back. <laughs> So I've always thought maybe those aliens that abducted Travis were like They're sort of rogue like teenagers. Rogue teenagers. Yeah. <laughs> I think I saw that episode on Aqua Teen Hunger Force. You know, the rogue teenagers <laughs> in the spaceship. Um, could, could be. I don't know. I don't have a, a an answer for that theory, but it could be. 
I, won't, I can't disagree with it. I don't know. <laughs> no. Have you ever had a chance to uh, meet Travis or talk to Travis? And your me, uh, no, experience? but but uh, I, I have not. But that was actually that movie was like probably as far as I can remember my first introduction to UFOs. It scared the living crap out of me. My dad rented it, and uh, when I was a kid. And I never thought about this stuff again uh, until, you know, about three until years ago. But time. yeah, that, that that movie was yeah. like, OK, I'm not going to watch have you read stuff have, anymore. <laughs> have you read Fire in the Sky? No, I just watched the movie. It's quite a good book. It's quite a good yeah. book. And, and it, it is taken from more of a scientific perspective. You, you've got all the loggers that were there and all their testimonies. And sure. Yeah answered and uh under oath they all beat the lie detector um the, the uh, one guy was... one guy was a little bit uh, but six of six of the guys all beat the lie detector and travis okay. has beaten the lie detector a million times uh, i like i don't know that i've ever run into well i probably have but uh most stories i hear about uh, abductions i i never really doubt but like the thing for me is um you know i've only been doing this for maybe two and a half three years most um, actually studying the topic so and each thing is so each uh, category of the topic is so dense like military history with it there's so much there so much abductions there. there's so much there and i if i want to study something i make a real commitment to do it um so i know exactly what i'm talking about the you know the most i can and so i because of that i haven't you know i haven't gotten to that part yet the, the abductions. So there's a lot that I have to learn about, about those situations. What are you most interested in? What are you digging into mo more than anything? Uh, um, still like the, what really intrigues me is the secret aspect of it. Like, what's the secret? What are you hiding? <laughs> Military, you're up to something, you know? And I, and it takes me down all sorts of roads and it's really exciting to like, I learn all sorts of stuff about, um, aerospace tech and, and secret jets and secret programs of the past, uh, MK Ultra and and things like that, or you know, thing all sorts that of stuff. Another been so. shut off the brain control. Psychological program. things. Yeah, they have not said that they've turned off brain control experiments. They have never said we shut this down. I'm yeah, and Havana syndrome really makes you wonder. Um, you know the the. You know, yeah. Speaking and I, of and hallucinogenics like... and uh, MK Ultra, you know, hallucinogenics, if you've ever done them, open up a whole new reality. Sure, sure, yeah. I've heard. I had a some some uh, a salad with some mushrooms on it once, and man, I need I to interrupt. Know. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Here we here go. Here's Manu's topic. Here we go. Listen, <laughs> I've eaten a lot of hallucinogenics, and. uh they talk to you. I don't know what they take. You <laughs> I haven't done it in like 15 years, but I, yeah, I had a good I, time. I've eaten all sorts of them. And I think they're <laughs> a beautiful spiritual tool to contact definitely another dimension and possibly uh, life forms in that dimension or spiritual life forms in that. Dimension. Interesting. There's people down in the South America, shamans that, that, right. you know, eat all sorts of uh, hallucinogenics and literally have spiritual warfare with each other. And, well, and they get these 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 creatures in the hallucinogenic dimension to like fight wars for each other against their tribes. Wow, crazy stuff. So well, you know, Manu, I think I, I don't want to go uh, off the, into the psilocybin world, but uh, it could all be kind of you know could all be kind of connected in a weird way, dreams and that and and UFOs and the paranormal. Based, based and all. on based there's so on much how... meat and all this, yeah, and all the little categories. Sorry, Tyson. testing one, two. No, uh, it, it, get, considering how late we are in the hour, I was going to ask Cassie if we had anybody who'd like to come on and ask Sean some questions. Yes. Yeah, sure. Sorry. And hey, if anybody's so, uh, listening, this show might go a little long. Uh, Sean, if you want to bounce on us, you can. But I'm Yeah, happy. I probably got like another 10, 15, if that's cool. Okay. Yeah, All that's right, good. that's Great. perfect. We have four people here that I'm sure will have a question or two from you. And one of them is a very I also would special like to guest. Show the, the couple of the videos that Sean shared with us. So um, let's at least uh, share. Uh, the, how long is the video with David Rush talking to Congress? That one. Four minutes or that one's four minutes. 
that's uh, and that's just his intro and we've talked about a lot of the stuff pretty much right yes. uh, and yeah so if anybody out there hasn't uh, heard heard of it this week and somehow they're getting this information through dangerous thoughts uh, <laughs> someone's got to do it you know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. hey man because it's all over the news cnn uh, it just it i when i started it was the same same way man and three years later i'm, I'm i've grown it's very slowly very slowly but it but grows this top, people yeah. are listening right this topic is a, a big deal uh we we get into all sorts of weird shit but th this this one to me is the most interesting. I could talk about aliens for forever. So, uh, who's our first guest? Uh, I am bringing them in right now. I'm saving one for last. We have a really special guest on tonight. Oh, oh we know who that is. Um, <laughs> I'll. All right, cool. Uh, and Dave, go. Dave, go ahead, or Katie, or whoever's first. All right. So up first, we have David, the Trime Traveler. What's up, Dave? Hey, I'm trying to travel. You might know me from the uh, Star Wars, uh, the uh, Star Trek spinoff, Star Twinks. And, or, uh, Star uh, Twinks. I, would, I knew one of those guys back in the <laughs> early 2000s. Sounds like a you script club in Las Twink. Vegas. <laughs> uh, often I'm like, you know, eating my breakfast downtown on a park bench or whatever, you know, and uh, someone will come up to me and recognize me from the show and then usually give me a dollar. Yeah, that, that's nice. what happens to me too. What's up, David? Did you have any questions? For, do you have any? Oh, uh, yeah, answers? actually, I did. I did have one question. Um, I was going to say, uh, what do you think is the likelihood that uh, um, all of the uh, beams and these uh, vehicles are time travelers from the past? Now, ones from the future wouldn't be as primitive because traveling forward in time, as we all know, is very simple. But uh, going backwards is very hard. So anyone that would transverse from another, you know, uh, galaxy or anything like that would have to be going beyond speed of light. Would understand, you know, time travel, you know, to some extent, warp drive or whatever. But uh, um, uh, yeah, so I would say that the primitive ones would be from Earth's past. Yeah, well, you know, unfortunately, I can't give you a verified, factual answer to that question. But um, yeah. Uh, that's one theory that people have, but like as you said, if if they were you know future humans coming back, that's a lot more complicated than going forward. But that's you know that's a part of the rumor mill. That's been in the rumor mill that you know um, things coming back in time to, to to save us from some sort of catastrophe. But I put that in the bin with everything else as far as things are going to happen in 2025 or all these other kind of things where people are trying to predict this or that. It's all kind of in the same bin of speculation for me, but it's also just as uh, viable as anything else, if you ask me, you know? Right. Yeah, I mean, I, that guy, Valiant Thor, that was supposedly... Visited, sure. He looked yeah. very, very human, the pictures of him, and mm -hmm. whether he was a real... Actually, in the, the first contact cases that, that you find in, in Blue Book files or other files are actually uh, of beings that look like humans and and they're nice and they go on rides you know around the country yeah, yeah. or whatever and they drop them off and everything's fine and they're like we'll be back don't fear us and then all of a sudden betty and barney hill i guess it turned into like uh gray aliens and they're doing things that like the nephilim from the book of genesis did which was you know making babies with women crazy well, stuff then so there's then it, there's the a lot of things changed still, right Sure. The day they yeah. stood yeah. still. That's Very... what I wanted to get into with Sean was that some of these more uh, unknown uh, cases that you find interesting. Is that can uh, can I ask you? Is is there a sure. specific couple cases that you find really interesting that not a lot of people have heard about? Well, I I just like the I really like the kind of one-off cases that are really compelling that that i haven't seen before you know a lot of people know of the same subset of cases that get rerun on the history channel over and over again for instance like i always all most of my reading on this topic has been blue book files there's over one hundred fifty thousand of them so there's there's a lot to read you know so so when I'm reading, like uh, I was reading one from 1953 of this uh, Canadian Air Force guy at, or U.S. Air Force guy who is in Canada at a early warning radar station that was installed there. 
and they were having sightings there over the course of maybe three or four months, but nothing too dramatic. But on one of the nights, um, there were about four or five people who saw this orange egg shaped object and they all saw it zipping around and doing things that didn't make sense. They saw it hovering over an antenna. And then one of the guys uh, was off by himself and a couple people found him. And he, they said in signed sworn affidavits in these blue book files that they saw him and he looked shocked. Like, and he had a white face, ghost pale. And then this guy who had that ghost face signed affidavit writes that he saw an egg shaped craft with uh, stairs coming out of the bottom of it, a being walking down that had two heads. One was an old person and one was a young person. And you look behind them and saw a few others in the craft. And the thing is, like, I've never heard anything like that before. Why would this guy sign a sworn affidavit that he saw this? You know, and other people saw him and and said he was shocked. Like, those are the things that just, like, really interest me because it's so baffling. Like, what actually happened here, you know? So, um, and then just a, a lot of different kind of cases people don't necessarily realize like back in the 50s there was a a few rocket scientists from white sands missile base who were tracking balloons at the base and when they were tracking the balloons actually saw ufos like actual ships that looked like flying saucers and they were tracking those all the way up into space and this guy went in the paper and said this and i think there's spaceships and all that so like top guys have said this before um but they've never you know sworn um under oath uh, to Congress like this. Which so, gets again, back that's to why what this I was is all saying. so historic. I, yeah. I have one. Which gets back thing. to what I was saying. They track the balloons. Blue. Yeah, they track balloons. Since yeah. he was, uh, since totally. he's on Blue Book, there's one thing I have to say about Blue Book. I've wanted to say it this whole time. Uh, one of the last surviving members of Blue Book, you, you might have seen this documentary. She's like 90 plus something years old. And uh, the guy doing the documentary is an ex FBI agent. I forget his name. I'm always forgetting these guys' names. I should know them better. Uh, but he asks her, uh, you know, what, what is, what is after working on blue book for all those years and she's in her late nineties, uh, you know, what is your takeaway from, from the cases that you went and looked at and you went and studied and the, 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 the material you had to look at. And she said, I want, I don't want to go too far into the weeds or get off book here, but I just think we're doomed. (laughs) Well, uh, thank you. Thanks a lot. <laughs> thanks a lot. Last surviving winter. <laughs> but that makes me think of my general opinion is that, you know, I think these things somehow, whether they created us or not, uh, they definitely have the power to take us out. And um, I, I'm hoping that the, 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 the human beings at some point uh, can stop our war like uh, bullshit because I, if I, there's I, if there's anything that's and I can leave us on this, if there's anything that's going to bring us together as human beings, it would be uh, somebody bringing evidence of this out that that we are humans are humans. And then there's also something else that isn't human. And maybe we can start to look at each other like brothers and sisters right. and, yeah. instead of enemies, instead of continuing to feed these aerospace corporations who have to have ongoing constant wars in order to profit and maintain their business plans and it's so transparent and obvious and maybe something like this could change things and there's something well, bigger it, than I us don't... right something <laughs> bigger than I don't us know. bigger yeah. than humanity right uh, we got two we've got a couple more guests and i'll just keep you for two more minutes john uh, okay uh, all right who's our next guest we have Cassie, dave leave us I'm Dave. Right here when we Go have ahead, Dave. Dave. Hello. Hi, Dave. I got a question for Sean. Maybe. Well, it's just like maybe some feedback on, on a personal experience I had like late last year. I used to drive through eastern Washington and picking up medical supplies and COVID samples to bring back to Seattle for testing. But I was driving by a Vagabond Army Airfield, which is kind of like south central Washington. I'm just driving west on 82, even though it's more like north. There's this this craft that was up in the air. It was just kind of hovering slowly over the freeway. It had a metallic 
like almost um oh i've already forgot the name of the it was a nut it was a chestnut or something like that it was just really ripply oh, wow. yeah but then it had a uh, pastel colored lights underneath it it hmm. had just kind of hovered slowly and i'm just like what the heck is that and then it just it just took off like a dart and i'm just like what the freaking heck was that wow. i just saw well wow. this was a reason yeah, and then what do you do with that to... yeah yeah that's tough yeah it's same but um back in the 90s uh, my partner at the time and i we were visiting vegas and we just knew area 51 was north of vegas and so we just started driving not knowing how far it actually was but we got about 10 15 miles from the strip and the car engine started to make a weird little knocking noise mm -hmm. and we just looked at each other just like um do we want to keep going and we decided to turn around because last thing we needed is have the rental car break down on us but as soon as we found a place to turn around and head back to Vegas, the knocking stopped. Okay, this hmm. is you're trying to head to Area 51, correct? <laughs> yes. This is my this is my biggest problem. Right now, we've got Gross comes out with this information. It really bothers me that he says he knows where these things are. Uh, he knows where the secret places are. If we get that information, why don't a million of us do a million alien march <laughs> onto? you know, wherever the, the, the locations are revealed, I think area 51 would be a good place to start. You think if a million people walked onto that base, they tried this just, though, didn't they? Would they just mass? Well, yeah, but they didn't get a million. That's they didn't the get a million. They got, people. they got, you know, a hundred or 200 people. And that's, that's containable. If yeah, they got yeah. a million, that would not be containable. Now, really quick. I know you got to go and we got two guests that I have to. Oh no, that's to fine. Yeah. Katie, Katie is all the way from England. It is over. It's past three in the morning, and oh she God. stayed on just to say hi to you. So I want to <laughs> uh, get to Katie, and then we have our final guest, which is his first time ever on here. And I'm I'm ready to explode for for Chris. We'll get to him in a minute, but let's uh, get to Katie, and then we'll close with Chris. Katie, welcome all the way from England. Hi, Katie. Good morning, my darling. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> no, I absolutely love this subject. I'm the same as Mano and Tyson. I could talk about UFOs, UAPs for forever. Um, and I, I've I've been told that I'm absolutely crazy for saying that I've seen something that could be. And not anymore. And wait to tell people I told you so. Um, <laughs> but one question that I have for you, Sean, is. Have you always believed, or is it because of something that's like happened, you've had something you've seen, or is sure. it just something that you've always believed? No, no, I was always the type of guy to kind of make fun of the the ghost shows, you know. Um, you know, you, do you hear that sound? Oh, okay, buddy. Yeah, I hear that. You know, like that kind of. That was me. Um, and then it was it was my experience in my sighting, and not the first one, but the second one. It that all just kind of really opened up my mind to to what's possible, and I wanted to go study it for myself, you know, to make sure that I wasn't crazy, that somebody that's more reputable or more, you know, has uh, more knowledge than me, more education, whatever, like a. Dave Fravor, Ryan Graves, has this happened to somebody else? And as I start going into those blue book files and looking at all the unexplained cases of the, the best pilots you could imagine, doctors, scientists, psychiatrists, you know, FBI agents, CIA agents, presidents, they've Jet all pilots, had colonels. this. Yeah. Yes. Um, so yeah. uh, your website, web, uh, uh, Citizen, uh, sorry, give me a break uh witness citizen. citizen witness citizen witness no it's it, witness it, it was citizen witness when i first started but then somebody already had that twitter handle so i changed it to witness citizen witness. and it was early oh, enough in the game it? where it didn't really matter yeah and so. what's your show called uh, what's your show witness called? citizen witness yeah. citizen as witness well witness and when is the youtube show on when can people watch i can i i keep it random you know whenever i'm feeling it so uh like I think it was a couple, I streamed the hearings live. So, so I did that uh, for a couple hours and I did a pre-show before that. So that's two shows in a week, but cool. sometimes I'll do three, sometimes two, sometimes I'll have some great guests. Sometimes I'll just do like research shows. 
or I bring up old documents or I, or like recaps of stuff like the hearings. So cool. And is your channel at witness citizen as well? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So witness yeah, so like and, witness and subscribe on YouTube, like, and subscribe and, and check out Sean Ross. He's, he's digging deep and uh, doing it in a scientific way. We'll bring on our last guest tonight, uh, Chris oh, Leftwich. What What's that? I can't believe that that Budweiser commercial has lasted so long. <laughs> There we go. There we go. It's a tradition here. Yeah, we've got to do it. Ribbit. <laughs> Bud. Why? Is her? So, I'm stoked that you came on. Chris, back when we started Dangerous Thoughts, before it was even oh, a, yes. a video program, we, we, did a, we did a podcast that was just on Twitter. And Chris, Chris was always one of our uh, favorite guests. He would always close the show. So cool. I'm glad he's here to close the show. Um, Chris told me his theory. Why don't you tell me your theory about what, what you think? Oh, about the moon in particular. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, Ooh, uh, moon theory. I like yeah, that. yeah. Uh, yeah. Real quick. Um, actually, Sean, I do want to tell you about my experience from when I was three years old, my first one. But um, personally, I think the moon is hollow. I think it's a space station. I think it's filled with the grays quote. Um, I believe that the grays are not the aliens. I believe that they are, kind of like stormtroopers they're kind of like clones they they can think for themselves but they do what they're told because and this brings me to well number one the size of the moon the size of the sun from you know standing on earth they're the exact same size we can get into that later but when i was three years old um it was about 11 o'clock at night i was dead asleep and i just bam woke up and and i just woke up i was just wide awake so i walked over to the window and i looked out and I saw what today is known as a Tic Tac. Um, I called it a giant Tylenol because that's that was that was it. I called it a wow. giant Tylenol. The thing it was a it was about the size of a Greyhound bus. It was probably fifty to seventy five feet away from me, and it just sat there. It didn't make wow. a sound. It didn't wobble. It didn't move. It was just there. And I looked at it, and I'm like, Oh, okay, you're the sky people, mm -hmm. and. Yeah, I was just like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, cool, cool. You came to visit. And you know, I could empathically communicate with them. And they oh. were the grace. And there were seven of them on board. And I saw what on the side, it looked like lights coming on, but it wasn't lights, it was windows. And they told me that they were my watchers, that they're my doctors. They are here to keep me alive and to watch over me. And then it started to very slowly move off to the right. Now, you know, and here I am, I'm three years old. And I'm like, hey, the fuck are you doing, man? What, what, what are you, you're going to come visit and you're just going to leave me here? What the hell? And I got pissed <laughs> yeah. off. And I ran down and I told my grandma about it. Of you course, know, she laughed it off. And uh, my mom and dad, they were at a Christmas party. My dad was a contractor for the DOD at Chanute Air Force Base, ran to Illinois back in the day. And it was a Christmas party that you are required to attend, you know, either bring your wife or your mistress, one of the two. <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, so th they were gone, you know, told, told my mom and dad all about the story. My grandma did. And then I told them in the morning and um, mom believed me. And to this day, I have a scar right here on my knee in the fleshy part of my right knee. And you can still see it. I'll have to get a picture of it. Uh, later on, the night of the Phoenix Lights, I want to say it was March 17th, 1997. There were two dots. They're hard to see, but they popped up right here on my upper right arm. And hmm. at first... Been I, there ever since? Yeah, yeah, they've been there ever since. Yeah, because I was taking a shower. No, there, there, there's oh. something scientific to the to the things in people's bodies, too. I mean, I don't remember. The, you might know the doctor's name if, if you've looked into any of this, Sean. But no, there, that's there it, are yeah. some, a lot of people I mean, a little, that have but, found yeah. legitimate things inside their bodies that they cannot explain how they got there. Yeah, no that's, that's really yeah, dude, yeah, speaking that's of, crazy. There's speaking something of, like. 20 something of them that have been removed by this particular doctor and they have like weird state. magnetic properties yeah. and magnetic stuff. Properties uh, radio Lear, something Lear or something maybe yeah dr Lear might be the right something. name yeah, yeah that uh, rings corbell bell. did something patient corbell. 17 i think he did yeah yeah yeah, yeah. actually uh, it was about five six years why, ago 
do, uh, the I guess the, the last question for the, the Grush meetings is I, I did sure. notice that Knapp and Corbell were like sitting right beside him. Did, do you know if they somehow orchestrated getting this guy in front of Congress? Or? Yeah, Corbell, I think, has been pretty involved uh, behind the scenes to do this. Apparently, David Grush, one of the first people he came to was uh, George Knapp and Jeremy Corbell. Cool. So um, maybe he saw some of their docs or some of their stuff. I don't know. I don't know, man. But uh, they're definitely a lot more, I think, involved than even I realized, uh, especially when they're sitting right there and they were able to um, submit their own kind of written testimony as well. Oh, cool. Jeremy and George submitted something. And a part of what George submitted had to do with, uh, I guess, a lot of uh, Russian documents and and like 40 shoot downs or attempts to shoot at ufos from russian pilots a couple of them wow. crashed and died so all this stuff is like <laughs> getting kind of crazy man yeah. and and yeah. kind of almost too much to to keep organized you know before when i was doing a podcast i do like recaps or whatever things were kind of you know there'd be a couple things maybe that happened but it was so easy just to all right here's the news we got two things you know but now it's like it's so all over the place on, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah so i've got one last question for you. you you've mentioned a bunch of this blue book files uh how do you get a hold of all these things where do you go to find uh, what you can read what you can actually do is i made it really easy on my website witnesscitizen.com um you can go to i think it's research tools I made a video that's like a how-to video to use all the links that I posted on that tab, which is like the archive, CIA, FOIA reading room, all that kind of stuff. So oh, cool. if you if you really want to dig into it, um, all the links are on my page. You can go to those links and start looking for stuff. Um, so you if go to you can't kind of figure it out com, yourself, yeah. You go to a, a how-to drop-down menu? Too? Yeah, it's, it's just a menu and it says research tools. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. That, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because, yeah, a lot of this information, like, you know, well, that, I, that's I what, I, what I ran into. I'll just say this quick. That's what I ran into when I first tried to uh, like study this stuff is I couldn't get much help from anybody from like uh, Richard Dolan's or anybody else. Like no one was replying to me. No one was helping me. So I did it all on my own from the ground up, figuring out how to do this. And what I wanted to do was in case there's another one of me somewhere out there. They have this tab on a website that they can just favorite and use and, and do all the, the research that they want. So. Yeah, and get to some of these documents that are uh, official and uh, correct. You no, know, um, at, at least government stamped and uh, correct. Uh, uh, yeah. Whatever the case, whatever the word is for not top secret anymore. <laughs> yeah, sure. Declassified. Declassified. There we go. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, uh, Sean Rosh, I want to thank you for being on our show. I'm going to show you. I had a great time with uh, Senator Reed, and I'm going to show okay. you a song as well. Uh, but I want to wish cool. you a, walk, a, a good night. Yeah, um, I had a great time. Thanks, thanks for everybody, everybody for being on the show. And yeah, we'd love you to have you back in the future. This is a topic we would love to uh, discuss maybe six months down the road. Thanks, we'll see sir. what happens. Right. Any oh, yeah. anytime, yeah. man. I'm here. So cool, man. Nice cool. to meet you, Sean. And, and yeah, you too, guys. Citizen.com and everything you're doing. Let's play Sean's uh uh to to sing him out. Let's uh play his uh uh video uh where he's interviewing Senator Harry Reid, and then let's play his music as well, uh from Witness Citizen. Cool. Peace. Right. See you guys. Do you believe in an afterlife, Senator? Yes. I'd like to just kind of give you the floor to say anything that you want to say to either the UFO community, politicians, whatever. This is your time to just get it out, whatever it is. Give us the message. Um, well, I appreciate your being involved in this. I think it's something the American people are entitled to know more about. And I am each day that goes by, I'm more interested than I was the day before. American people need to know more. It's up to members of Congress to do something to make sure that their constituents understand they're trying to figure this out. And I repeat, also up to the American people who are interested in that subject, to make sure they put pressure on their members of Congress to, make, to uh, determine what they're doing to try to understand what these 
UFOs are all about. Well, I think uh, we need more people like you to understand that there's so much we don't know. Yeah. And it's, it's through programs like you're involved in, it's going to make it even better for people in the future to learn more about this. I, I, I appreciate what you're doing. Well, I'm just thankful that, you know, you took that risk a long time ago, so I could be here doing it. I made some progress, even more with an extra day. Me is a subsequently handmade, and that's all there is to say. Now let's understand something When you're honest everything becomes slightly less neurotic Because everyone wants something Whether or not it's either nothing You talk a good game but it lacks someone to blame I'm Gonna take a lot more loving Freedom is something to die for When it's not a matter of life to the core Reasons are endless and that's how it ends up like before
And that was Glass Rain by Sean Varash, uh, witnesscitizen.com. Uh, all around good human being, hum amazing uh, artist, uh, UF UAP researcher, uh, government secrecy researcher, and a pretty cool guy and a great songwriter. Uh, we want to thank him for being on the show this week. We want to thank all of our guests for coming on the show this week. If you ever want to be a guest on Dangerous Thoughts, just send a DM to at subscript pirate. That's S U B C. Uh, sorry, S U B S C subscript. S U B S C R I P T subscript pirate at uh, X. You know the old Twitter? It's called X now. Uh, so go to at subscript pirate on Twitter slash now X. I know I'll get used to that soon enough. Uh, let him know that you want to speak, and he'll send you a link uh, to come on the program to either ask me or Tyson or one of our guests a question. Also, uh, to end the show, I want to, and I'm going to start saying this every week, we want Dangerous Thoughts to become bigger and better, and we're looking for writers. We're looking for producers. We're looking for graphic design people. We're looking for um, people that are willing to donate their time, energy, and effort into making this a better show. Um, and if you're interested in helping us out, know that it's going to be a very big commitment, first and foremost. We want to, we need your help, uh, and we want to put a great team together. We don't have a gigantic fund to pay anyone at this point, so this would just be Dangerous Thoughts family pitching in to make this show bigger and better uh, every week so that we have some a couple more producers uh, to help us get uh, video and media and stuff together uh, and contact our guests, uh, et cetera. Uh, writers, any, any way that you think you can help make our show better, write to us at dangerousthoughtsshow at gmail.com. And uh, you can also write to me at monoatereme at gmail.com and tell me how you want to help us uh, improve the show and become a part of the Dangerous Thoughts behind the scenes family. Um, with that, I think this was a great show, Tyson. I, I know me and you didn't say it a ton. I always talk over our guests, but I thought having Sean on was great. And um, the, U, the UAP topic to me is always such a fun thing to talk about and hear about. I could talk about that forever. Oh, and the yes. first time ever we had Chris. We have to immortalize this show yeah, because we had the was, Left Witch uh, on. Oh, awesome. my God. That was amazing. I hope Left Witch comes <laughs> back every week because I love. I, I would love to. Sh yeah. There we are. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Left Witch. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you next week. And uh, hey, you we'll doing an overtime? You doing an overtime show? Yeah, we're up doing an overtime show. Of course, always you can join us on overtime at X at uh, Twitter. <laughs> I I even I even tweeted Elon Musk. I said I don't give a fuck what you call it. It's Twitter. <laughs> Twitter. Right. You know, people are gonna fight it for a while, but at some point we'll lose. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. X is the thing. So uh, if you still he just change his name to X, just be yeah. done with it. Elon X. Kinda, he no, just is. just X. Yeah. Oh, he, remember, how, remember when Prince changed his name to a symbol? You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, and, and Elon kind of is X. I think that guy might be an alien himself or, or a, uh, uh, an avatar of some sort. He's a strange dude. Um, Could be. But you can join us on Overtime, Dangerous Thoughts on Overtime at X Twitter uh right now and we'll be on there for uh, another 20 30 minutes or so talking about uaps and uh thanks for joining us on the live show check us out here every week at 6 p.m that's dangerous thoughts for this week see you next week I'm signing out lighter bye-bye